that's beautiful. And you're still playing. Can we do this? Wait. Can we sing Jesus Love Me real quick? Let's sing that with me. Sing Jesus Love Me. Drown me out. Let's do this. Jesus loves me. Usually by the time they get to the four French horns, 
I'm faking a heart attack or something to get out of there because I don't want to hear that whole song. But the 12 drummers drumming, that's the 12 apostles and everything and stuff like that. It's all about Jesus and there's a whole gospel thing inside that. But this is our one simple truth if you thought I would eventually get there. Is this, if you're taking notes in the back of your newsletter, it's very simple. What I listen to will determine who I am. What I listen to will determine who I am. Now some of you are like me, you've got a past. When you were a teenager, especially in the 80s, you had the greatest music ever. Uh, but what you listen to makes you who you are. Headbangers listen to headbanging music. The goths listen to goth music. Boring people listen to boring music. And really cool people like me listen to Johnny Cash. And Folsom Prison Blues is the greatest album ever made. But if you're taking notes, let me give you three things to listen to in Christmas. The source of truth that you should listen to. Number one, if you're taking notes in Matthew chapter one of this. I do have a point today. Listen to the messenger of Christmas. Look at Matthew 1.20. Here's the messenger of Christmas. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, we know this story. In the middle of the night, an angel appears unto Joseph. Today, let me just remind you of this thought. We do not need a special messenger today. You do not need an angel to appear to you to tell you what to do and how to behave and how to act. Because today, the complete inspired word of God is here. God has sent his message to you. You say, if God would just talk to me, he is talking to you. You need to get into God's word and open it up. He said, Pastor Steve, I don't know if this is what I should do. Would you pray for me? And every now and then someone will ask me to pray about some decision they have to make in their life. And I'll stop them and say, listen, you don't have to pray about that. But what do you mean? Well, what you're talking about is praying about doing the right thing or the wrong thing. This is a black and white issue. Well, yes, you do the right thing. You don't have to pray whether to steal. You don't have to pray whether to cheat. You don't have to pray whether to lie to somebody. It, it, I mean, unless it's your wife and she says, do I look fat in this? It's a special dispensation. You lie about that. Your mother-in-law says you like the food. You go, oh, yes, it's great. Even if it's haggis, you know. What is wrong with English people? Who eats the intestines of a, of a sheep? But anyways, uh, you don't have to pray about different things because the Word of God has set very specific things in place. God's message has already come. Today, listen to the message. It is in the Word of God. Amen. And at the very beginning, only through Jesus can you achieve peace. At the very beginning, we read the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. What does he say? Peace and goodwill towards men. We search for peace in our homes. A four-year-old and a six-year-old presented their mom with a house plan. They had used their own money and she was thrilled. Uh, the older one said to them with a sad face, there was a, bank, a bouquet, and we wanted to give it to you at the flower shop. It was really pretty, but it was too expensive. I, it had a ribbon on it, and it said this, rest in peace. <laughs> and we thought it would be perfect for you, Mom, because you're always asking for a little peace so you can rest. <laughs> we search for peace in money. How'd that work out for you the last few years? We search for peace in relationships. Can I just say this to you? Young people, old people don't listen, so young people listen to me. Um, you will not find peace in a relationship. Some of you girls, this is what you're going to think. If I could just get my man, and you'll do it with that head bob too. If I could just get that man, no, 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 no. You get your relationship right with God, then you'll be ready for the man God has for you. Amen? We do it backwards. We try to find the man and then try to develop that relationship with you and God. And then it does not work that way. You're here, listen, you're here and you're a single guy and you're thinking, well, i got to find that right girl. And she's got to be this, this, and this. No, 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 brother. You need to get your relationship with you and God right. Because listen to me, God will pick a girl better for you than you could ever pick for you. You'll pick on something shallow and superficial. And God will pick on something deeper and will pick on something that can be there when you're 65 and you need someone to help you. 
Amen? Amen. Because cute and pretty wears off really quick when you can't pay the mortgage. Amen? Amen. And God will pick somebody and you'll get somebody as cute as my angel. You're here, aren't you? There she is. Normally at 10 o'clock she's down there and she doesn't get to hear all these great things I say about her. I need to have a good week. You will only find true peace in Jesus Christ. Not religion, but in Jesus. Stop blaming Jesus for all the lousy things people who claim to know him do. Stop thinking of Jesus as religion. Religion's evil, but Jesus brings peace. Number two, listen to the meaning of Christmas. The meaning of Christmas. Don't you love how preachers do their outlines with this? It's all M words, right? The guy I stole this from was, no, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> you think, well, if you're going to steal them, steal better messages. But anyway, number two, the meaning of Christmas. Look at verse 20 again. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived unto her is of the Holy Ghost. The meaning is that God himself will send a son to be born of a virgin. Van Tabner, kind of a quick-witted theologian, said this about the virgin birth. I don't understand electricity, but I don't intend to sit around in the dark until I do. Amen? Meaning, I don't fully understand how God had a virgin conceived and how the Holy Spirit came upon her. I don't understand the mechanics of all of that, but honestly, I'm glad I don't understand it. If you're here and you have questions about how God works, get in line because I have questions about how God works. If the moment I can understand how God works is the moment I get a new God. I'm pretty smart, but if I can figure out God, he must not be that great. Amen? That's right. I don't understand exactly how he did this, but I do know this, is he came and he was born of a virgin. And he was sinless. And he lived 33 years. And he died on an old, cruel Roman cross. But on that third day, the real meaning of Christmas, on that third day, he rose again. That's right. And because of that, I have accepted Christ as my Savior. Because of that, my sins have been forgiven. Because of that, he's brought peace into my life. And because of that, I can say, just like the angels, fear not. What was the first thing the angel said to Joseph? Fear not. What was the first thing the angel said unto Mary? Fear not. What was the first thing the angels said unto the shepherd? And the angel said unto them in Luke 2, What? Fear not. A life that accepts Jesus is a life of peace and meaning. A life that accepts Jesus is a life of peace and meaning. And maybe... Just maybe, hear me out. Maybe that's your problem. Maybe in reality, everything you've tried, whether it be drugs and alcohol, or whether it be materialism, maybe the peace and meaning of your life is looking for is Jesus. And you're here and you think, well, I already got my hand stamped, I already got my ticket. I said my prayer. Yeah, you got your ticket to heaven, and you will go, because I believe that God is faithful to his word. You got it. But does God have all of you? You wonder why young people, old people don't listen to when they insult you for a second. You wonder why so many old people are so bitter and mean? Because God gave them a purpose and a meaning in their life, and they never fulfilled it. They never did it. Some of the worst people to be around are people who are running from God. Because they are miserable, they have no peace, and they have no meaning. Now don't you dare elbow your husband as I say that. <laughs> Number three, if you're taking notes, listen to the message of Christmas. Anybody guess that? You saw they were all ends? Anybody? Come on, just stop for a moment. We're stop preaching. Anybody guess that it was message? Mary, she's the only one, right? And the rest of you don't do very good at crossword puzzles, do you? Thank you. Somebody laughed. <laughs> the message of Christmas. Look at verse 21 of Matthew 1. 
And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In a Peanuts cartoon strip, good old Charlie Brown says to Linus, Life is just too much for me. I've been confused from the day I was born. I think the whole trouble is that we're thrown into this life too fast. We're not really prepared. Linus asks, what do you want? A chance to warm up first? <laughs> the message of Christmas is this, is that there is more to this existence than just life here on earth. There is more to your existence to just this life here on earth. And by the way, there's more to your existence than just you. I don't know if you know this or not, but other people live in this world too. Anybody shocked at that? I mean, you think of it, but in reality, we don't really believe that because we live our world and we live our life like we're the only ones in it. That our impact only has influence for us. Do you know the number one reason why you go to church? The tithe. No. <laughs> number one reason you go to church is to help and bless other people. Hey, if this is the only Sunday you've been at, and this is the only time you come to church and somebody dragged you, can I just ask you, where have you been? Well, this is about me. No, it's not about you. See, the message of Christmas is that there's more to this life than just you. There's more to this life than just our existence here on this world. <laughs> Somebody has said it accurately, eternity, smoking or non-smoking? Eternity. It's either with Jesus or without Jesus. But this world here, it's either Jesus is Lord or you as Lord. What you need and what you want comes first? Or the fact that maybe God has placed you in this world to have a purpose and a meaning and direction. And there's somebody that God loves so much too that He wants to make an impact and He wants to use you.